take a look now at a, an example of compl complex site with multiple activities. Yeah, uh, we, we got the screen share going, I believe. Um, we're going to, similar to um, these other uh, entities that we've created today, we're going to um, instead, well, you'll see, I don't want to preview it too much, but we'll create, uh, cr click the button as we've always done, create organization slash site. Uh, let's call it Steve's Resource Recovery Complex. And so again, this is going to be a comp complex site with multiple activities um, taking place on the same site. And we'll talk about best practices for how to um, make sure that you're uh, um, acknowledging and um, reporting to us in the manner that you should be. Uh, so we're going to enter a good phone number for the site, um, email. I'm going to use my uh, Cower Cycle work email and um, enter. Um, we're going to leave these form fields blank for now. Mm, physical address, again, um, the, the, the street address uh, that your facility or operation is physically located at. So we're going to just use the EPA building as an example here and say that that's a good place to get mail. So enter a good contact uh, phone number for me. That can be, you know, the same as the one that you put on the site. So now we're actually going to get into the bulk of it, which is adding um, the multiple activities. And really, it's pretty straightforward. Um, only this time you'll be adding, you know, from this drop down more than one activity. So um, as I explained on this site, we have a transfer processing facility and a landfill and uh, several uh, clean lines uh, or recyclables or process. So how do we account for all of this? Well, uh, you're about to find out. Um, transfer process. Let's go ahead and add our transfer processor. So let's call this Steve's Murph uh, Transfer Station. And um, you know, I, normally there would be a Swiss number associated with this, but we're going to um, leave that blank for now because this is a hypothetical facility. So we'll enter the transfer station. Transfer station Murph. Uh, we'll we'll just hit that add button and keep on adding activities. So we're going to add the landfill now, uh, Steve's landfill. And so this is for um, activities that are on the same physical site, meaning um, the same parcel or adjacent parcels. Um, so you can add as many as there are on this physical site. So. Um, in the example I gave in the PowerPoint presentation, the, we had a recycler composter uh, su, uh, reporting as a sub activity. And since that's the case, we're not going to enter that in, in this uh, table here. This is only for um, reporting entities, not reporting entity sub activities. So just, uh, and I think there is an, an, a note here, or at least there. There should be, um, oh, if you wish to have a reporting entity activity, have another reporting entity activity report for them. You must add these reporting entity activities after you have completed initial registration. So it wouldn't, wouldn't be until after you create the profile and, the, and then you would um, report those sub activities. So we'll get to that in just a second here. But for right now, we're just going to indicate that I have the signature authority, um, check your answers, and then go ahead and hit save. Now it's going to uh, create the registration uh, for this uh, comp complex site. And then we'll um, double back in and, well, I'll show you in just a second. When, when you get the added All right, so we've created that uh, complex site, 
And what we'll want to do now is add the dependent act, dependent uh, sub activity. Actually, I, I, my narration again was too slow for my clicking. What you'll want to do is um, click on this button here, reporting entity activities. Um, that's a different tab. That'll take you to a different tab, which shows the two reporting entity activities that you had just registered in the previous screen. And as you can see, it's Steve's uh, MRF transfer station, transfer processor, and also Steve's landfill, the landfill. So both of those have been registered. Now we want to add the reporting entity sub activity. So we would hit select. Um, and add the dependent activity. So if you don't have it for whatever reason, um, please let us know and we can go about uh, making sure that you have the proper credentials to get in and do what you need to do as it relates to this. So when you click add dependent activity, that's when, as I said, that's always going to be a recycling composting activity who's um, uh, having a, another reporting entity take the lead for its reporting. So when you say, so there's a number of these, uh, again, it's gonna basically populate, it's gonna look like that that um, form that sort of pops up when you click add reporting entity on the um, registration screen. It basically has the same information there. So dependent activity, we'll call it Steve's Recycling. Uh, EPA ID, if you click on that, um, the plus, the question mark, someone asked us to click the question mark uh, to see what it says. Again, it's an optional form field. If you have an EPA ID uh, for your facility, go ahead and indicate that. Swiss ID, meaning Swiss number, meaning uh, solid waste information system. And it would be in the format, um, you know, uh, 00 dash AA dash, you know, 0123. So if it looks like something like that and you've been assigned one, um, please go ahead and, and put that in. But um, in the case of recycler composter, you would never have a Swiss number, but this is just a, a little bit more about that, that form field. So we've added, that's all that's required to add the dependent recycler composter. So you would only need to do this if your clean recycling facility or operation um, again, meets or exceeds the de minimis tonnage threshold uh, triggering reporting. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't need to register that. However, I want to um, put a caveat out there that when it comes to us at the end of the month uh, looking over who is registered and who hasn't, um, if, you, if it if it is on our, you know, if we have y'all under, for instance, to, you know, that we we understand that you have two different activities on site, the recycler composter and the transfer processor, um, and that's how you're known sort of to us. Uh, it would be a big help if you were to just uh, register the, make sure that both are, are in the system um, in terms of the registration. Um, that way we can verify that yes, you know, you also have recycling activities taking place and yes, you already account for that. So we're good to go. So if you click um, in here and this is again the details for the reporting entity, uh, you'll see that for Steve's MRF transfer station, there, the Steve's recycling has the same RDRS number because it's reporting as a dependent of uh, the transfer station, so it wouldn't be assigned a separate RZRS number. It's just on it's just on the books, you know, for our purposes, so we can account for that um, in terms of fulfilling the obligations to register. So it's on our radar screen. Um, we have about five minutes before we're going to move into Peter's part of the presentation. So. At this point, maybe we'll take some questions that you may have uh, related to some of the material that was covered. So uh, anything from the online, Dan? Yeah, so um, this one's actually relevant to complex sites, so we'll get it first. Um, do all of the entities have to be on the same property? Uh, yes, in order to be considered um, on the same 
as part of the same organization slash site, they either need to be on the same parcel or an, an adjacent parcel. Um, so if they're on a, a the same or adjacent parcel, they can be registered and combine the reporting entity activities under one complex organization slash site. Um, feel free to uh, email in or um, reply if that answer wasn't specific enough. Um, any Anything else? Please go ahead. Yeah, sure. Um, here's one regarding recycling. If a company has more than one recycling location, is there a way to register without inputting the company several times? Um, if, so in terms of inputting the if you mean like the physical address and such? Yeah, I, be, I believe that's the intent of the question. I, I think you would have to, well, um, again, it depends on how the, if it's all on the same site, you know, you can combine the activities. But if it's multiple sites, um, you, you know, it may be the case that you have to um, type in that information again and again. But it's really not, not too much, especially if the, um, physical and mailing addresses are the same and um, you know uh, lots of browsers have like autofill and and that sort of thing so um, that may ease the the burden of having to um, do all of that but um, yeah I mean if they're if they're separate addresses you know we would need to know they would have to you know tell us which ones they are Um, the question we discussed earlier, um, this isn't relevant to registration itself, but it is a fairly easy question to answer. Is this a replacement for entering info in the SWIMS database? Um, so this, the SWIMS database is the LA County um, data system. This RDRS does not change any of the existing requirements with regards to SWIMS. Um, so you would need to um, speak with the SWIMS representative to ascertain whether or not reporting is still required for pursuant to that. Um, my, knowledge, my understanding is that, you know, I, I am not aware of anything that has changed with regard to reporting obligations in the LA County SWIMS database. So if they're advising that you need to continue reporting in that, um, please go ahead and do so. This does not supplant um, or, um, you know, otherwise uh, cause that to uh, no longer, you know, be a requirement, if that makes sense. All right, I have one more. Um, I do not believe everyone is aware of the registration date or the reporting dates. Is it possible to register after, uh, after April 30th? Is this voluntary? If not, what enforcement mechanism is or will be put in place? So I don't think we really want to um, necessarily telegraph our hands about that. Uh, all I will say is that um, the registration is 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 a, is required uh, pursuant to regulations uh, section 18815.10 of uh, Article 9.25 of Title 14 of the California Code of Regulations is quite specific in indicating that um, facilities that, and operations and businesses that have not registered by April 30th are squarely and um, they already existed prior to that date, uh, are squarely in violation. And there are um, penalties associated with um, being out of compliance with the regulations. We have a penalty table that has been uh, prescribed and is located in that same section, regulatory section that I just alluded to. So there are going to be penalties associated with failing to register by the due date. And we do want to encourage everyone to, um, you know, do their best to be in compliance um, as best as possible with the regulations. C businesses can register after April 30th. Um, it's not as though we're going to lock them out of the system. And um, if you have a reporting obligation in our DRS, it's not voluntary. It's mandatory that you register by that April 30th due date. Um, we need to have uh, 
the entities that are expected to report in the system prior to it getting started so um, they can identify, you know, the other facilities that they're sending material to. So it's important that we have as broad a landscape as possible. That will make reporting for everyone a lot easier.